The royal family has amassed quite a fortune during their reign, so let's take a look at their net worths and spending habits. You'll never guess how much that purple crown you've seen during procession footage is worth. The family itself holds a bulk of the wealth that anyone has any claim to. According to Forbes, the monarchy PLC, also known as The Firm, is estimated to hold nearly $28 billion in various assets. Some of these assets include Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, and the Crown Estate. Forbes also reported that the Crown Estate manages $19.5 billion in assets, and Buckingham Palace is worth $49 billion. As we previously mentioned, the Crown Estate is held by the royal family, but in name only, meaning the estate actually falls under the control of the British government. However, the government provides 25% of the profits from the Crown Estate to the royal family in what's called the Sovereign Grant which is basically a subsidy from taxpayers. According to a financial report from the Crown Estate, that grant totaled $99.4 million in 2021. The Duchy of Cornwall is another major asset for the royal family, and it's a vast property valued at $1.2 billion. There is another centuries-old estate called the Duchy of Lancaster, which is valued at $942.05 million, and the profits from this estate go to the reigning monarch. The last major source of wealth that is associated with the royal family is the brand itself. The royal family, as a brand, generates $2.03 billion in economic activity for Britain through global tourism, which enhances the value of merchandise that dons a royal warrant. It's unfortunate that whenever someone wealthy passes, the uncomfortable and inevitable question arises, what will happen to their money? Normally, the amount being discussed isn't $500 million, which is the amount of the Queen's personal fortune, according to Forbes. Britain's Sunday Times placed it closer to $430 million, and some experts on the subject of the Queen's finances, like David McClure in his 2020 book The Queen's True Worth, estimate it to be around $468 million. Regardless, Having a personal net worth ranging from $430 to $500 million will cause quite a ruckus during the reading of the will. Her personal wealth is shrouded in mystery, but we can safely say that most of it derives from jewelry, art, investment holdings, and a strong real estate portfolio that includes Balmoral Castle in Scotland and Sandringham House in England. The late queen also has a plethora of jewelry both in her personal collection and a collection owned by the monarch. You may have heard the crown jewels mentioned from time to time, and that just means any jewelry that is owned by the crown and is immediately passed down to the next heir upon death. Most of the jewelry has never been insured, so therefore it has never been officially appraised. But there are estimations that the imperial state crown alone is worth billions of dollars. King Charles III was formerly the longest serving heir to the throne and is now stepping into his role as king, which comes with a massive inheritance. Fortunately for the new king, he will not pay any inheritance tax on any of the assets he may acquire from the queen due to a 1993 agreement with the government. To give you an idea on how much money that will save King Charles III, other people in Britain are hit with a 40% tax on any inheritance over $380,000. Prior to inheriting substantial wealth, Charles wasn't doing too badly on his own. The Duchy of Cornwall that we previously mentioned earned him around $27 million just this year, and now Prince William is going to inherit it due to Charles' recent promotion. Charles is an environment enthusiast, and while he was Prince of Wales, he founded several ventures to protect the environment and promote organic farming. He owned the largest organic food brand in the UK, as well as a nature retreat and craft center in Transylvania that operates as a bed and breakfast. Prince William will also be inheriting those ventures. 
Speaking of Prince William, he is now first in line as heir to the throne, and this position also makes him a much wealthier man. Prior to his inheritance, it is estimated that he was worth 30 to 40 million dollars. He received 10 million dollars from Princess Diana's estate on his 30th birthday, and was previously a full-time helicopter pilot in the Royal Air Force, which earned him an annual salary of $62,000, which he reportedly donated to charity. At the bare minimum, Prince William has almost doubled his net worth since the Duchy of Cornwall brings in between 20 and 30 million dollars per year. Prince Harry has an interesting history with the royal family, which began in January of 2020, when he and Meghan Markle announced they would be taking a step back from their royal duties. Since then, they have been living off of his share of the inheritance that he and William received from Princess Diana, which, for Harry, amounted to around $13 million. It appears that separating from the royal family has its benefits. Since the historical announcement, they have signed a Netflix deal worth between $100 and $240 million. Harry and Meghan also signed a Spotify deal, estimated to be worth between $15 and $18 million. Their home in Montecito, Santa Barbara has 9 bedrooms and 16 bathrooms and cost them $14.65 million. Despite not receiving any assistance from the family, the pair appears to be doing just fine. So far we have discussed the abundance of wealth the royal family has both within the monarch and their personal assets or portfolios. However, it isn't all fun and games, as there are some restrictions placed on how the money they earn through the monarch can be spent. For example, King Charles can only spend the aforementioned sovereign grant on royal duties, such as royal travel, communications and information, and the maintenance of the royal palaces. This grant also allows for the royal household to be subject to audits like any other government expenditure. According to the Institute for Governments, the UK Treasury approves any large property transactions the family may want to make. The duchies, however, are privately owned, so whoever owns them is not required to provide details on their income. They have voluntarily paid an income tax for several years, but without disclosing their actual income, the tax they decide to pay is essentially a number plucked out of thin air. The family is also incredibly private with their spending habits, since they don't want to upset the British taxpayers by being unnecessarily flashy. After all, these people are royalty and not rap stars. It's incredible to think about how Queen Elizabeth witnessed an abundance of historical events during her 70-year reign. Those events include the polio vaccine being declared safe for use, the assassination of Martin Luther King, end of the Vietnam War, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and many, many other grand moments that occurred over her seven-decade reign. May she rest in peace.